Hi, my name is Tony Bruce, and this is my final project for SLP 288 Fall 2022 for Professor Price's class. Um, excuse me for being nervous. Um, I'm knowledgeable on the subject, but not good behind a camera. So for this project, I decided to talk about traumatic brain injuries and their effect on communication. I did this video as well as a PowerPoint, which I'm going to be referencing during my um, video. So I will start out with a textbook definition of exactly what a traumatic brain injury is. According to the American Brain Foundation, traumatic brain injuries or TBIs occur when the brain experiences sudden trauma or damage, typically from blows to the head or violent jolts. TBIs can result from both closed injuries or open injuries. And the difference between a closed and open injury TBI is that with a closed TBI, the skull remains intact, whereas with an open TBI, the skull is actually penetrated and the cells are actually damaged from the object and damage the brain tissue directly. For my research, I gathered some statistics from lectures and various websites regarding TBIs. Um, here are some of the interesting facts that I found. Um, 1.7 million people experience TBIs annually. Um, 64,362 estimated deaths from TBIs in 2020, or there were. 32% of all TBI-related hospitalizations were people aged 75 and older. Um, two out of three traumatic brain injuries per year are from motor vehicles alone. And one-third of permanent disabilities in children are caused by accidents also. So common causes for TBIs are falls, sports injuries, car or motor vehicle accidents, physical assault, child abuse, or they are firearm related. So the symptoms of a traumatic brain injury vary largely on um, the severity of the damage and the location of the damage. So no two people are gonna experience the same exact symptoms, but they will have a lot of similar symptoms. Um, so generally with TBIs and their symptoms, they range from mild to moderate to severe. With a mild TBI, you often experience loss of consciousness for a couple seconds, maybe a minute, it's really brief, or you don't lose consciousness at all. Um, your ears might be ringing, you might experience a headache, um, you might get a little tired and lethargic, your vision might be a little blurry, you're just confused, and for the next couple days after your mild TBI, you might have a disrupted sleeping pattern, your behavior might be a little different, you might have mood swings, and you might just have trouble thinking, concentrating, or remembering anything for the following days after the TBI. Wherein, with the moderate to severe TBIs, they also experience these symptoms, but with more severe side effects. So they do get the headache, but with a moderate or to severe um, TBI, the headache worsens and it doesn't go away. Um, their pupils may dilate, dilate in one eye or both. Um, they might be nauseous and vomiting repeatedly, slurred speech, loss of coordination. They're agitated. They just keep getting more confused and they may experience numbness in their extremities due to damage in the peripheral neurological or the PNS. Not only do TBIs really affect people physically, but they also affect people in their communicative abilities. Um, and because a TBI does or can affect different areas of the brain. Um, not all people will have the same physical, neurological, and communicative difficulties. And because the severity does differ, um, I'm going to talk more about the general common things that are seen with a TBI. Um, so, speech complications. If someone suffers an injury to the brain's peripheral nervous system, back here, that could cause speech disorders, ones they didn't have before the accident, such as dysarthia, which is the inability to control their facial muscles and the articulators, and it can kind of droop on one side, and that results in slow, slurred speech. Um, 
And then they can also get acquired dyspraxia of speech, um, which is caused by brain damage. And it, they lose um, learned linguistic skills and language skills. They lose them or they're impaired. Um, it's also seen in stroke victims or people with tumors too. Um, as well as speech complications, there are a lot of language complications as well. Um, <clears throat> and pragmatic issues because behaviorally people with TBIs um, act out a lot. Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. And with speech complications, there's also a lot of language and pragmatic complications as well. Um, they have, no, God damn it. Along with speech complications, there's also a lot of language complications. Um, it's not just about difficulty producing speech. They often have communicative and cognitive issues too. Um, some of the complications that can be seen pretty generally um, is a slower overall ability to process information, word retrieval, um, meaning they don't easily find words they're trying to say accessible right away. It takes them a minute to find it. Um, they have a difficulty naming tasks, even just medial day-to-day -day ones. Um, they have trouble expressing complex thoughts, um, and they have a lot of difficulty organizing and prioritizing. And it's also been seen, too, in people suffering from TBIs to have inappropriate conversations. So they also have language complications. There's not only difficulty producing speech, but they also have communicative and cognitive um, difficulties as well. Some of the common complications that are seen are um, just trouble with basic comprehension and language skills, um, overall um, slower processing of information. They have trouble with word retrieval, meaning they have a hard time finding a word to describe what they want to say, and it just takes them a little longer to process it. Um, they have difficulty naming tasks, and they have a lot of difficulty with organization and prioritizing. Um, they've also been known to kind of be have inappropriate conversations, not as in they're saying something necessarily inappropriate, but um, just could be inappropriate for the situation, such as someone's discussing grief they went to a funeral and they start talking about this funny tv show they saw yesterday or the weather and that's not really an appropriate time to be discussing that when someone is talking about grief um, along with speech and language complications a lot of people with tbis also suffer from swallowing complications which is known as dysphagia um, which is the difficulty or inability to swallow um, <clears throat> according to the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders, dysphagia occurs when there is a problem with the neural control or the structures involved in any part or, or of the swallowing process. Weak tongue or cheek muscles may make it hard to move food around in the mouth for chewing. Um, dysphagia makes it really painful and almost impossible for some to eat. Um, but interestingly enough, as stated in our lecture, not all people with dysphagia actually have speech and language complications, which is really interesting. Um, <clears throat> but swallowing complications fall back on not meeting your nutritional value or your caloric intake every day or maintaining the weight that you're supposed to be at to be healthy, which is not good at all. Um, <clears throat> for those who suffer from tra uh, traumatic brain injuries, especially in the beginning of the re rehabilitation, um, Incorporating an AAC device and their therapy could be a good resource. Um, I would say that a picture core board would be a pretty good way to start because it's easy, it's basic. They can see the pictures, they can point, they can use a pointer. You can point for them and they can like give you a wink or a nod to help kind of further that communication level. And as they progress through their rehabilitation and gain more mobility in their hands and their face, facial muscles, they might be able to produce sounds um, or better point. Um. <clears throat> and there are several accommodations you can make in a therapy setting for someone who suffered from a TBI. Um, like I said, you could have the core board with the pointer. 
if they're not really there producing phonemes and words and utterances, it'll just be easier for them to do that for then. And then um, if they are further along in their rehabilitation process and they're still unable to really make intelligible speech, they may have access to a high-tech AAC device, which obviously you'd want close to them within proximity and reaching. Um, <clears throat> If they are hearing impaired, you want to make sure that there's not too much background noise, that they have their hearing aids, and that um, they can clearly see your face so they can hear and see. And also, it may be beneficial to invest in an FM transmitter to help kind of amplify the sound um, to their hearing aids so they can more clearly hear you. Um, and then I have my work cited references. I also did reference a lot of the lectures, um, but thank you. Have a wonderful winter break.